are listening to an hour in DA's head. Real people with real challenges teaching us real lessons. And this is this week's guest. Okay, so uh, hello, Joanne. How are you today? I'm good, thanks. You? I am great. I am fabulous. So I'm very happy to have you on the show. Uh, you know, I think you're a very, very interesting, uh, person. Obviously, I've known you for what, l the last uh, two or three years now, or two years, approximately, the last couple of years. About. Yes. And, uh, and yeah, so today's subject, the myth of the stay at home, uh, moms. Uh, you know, I think you're a very, very mature person, but I also think you're a very, um, you know, you're an insightful person. I think you're someone who re I really respect. Uh, you know, her. I really respect your opinion, and I think you, you you're a really great fit to the show. And I think you can really, uh, you know, teach and you have something to give to our listeners here. You know, I really I really believe that. And uh, anyway, so thank you for being on the show. So pleasure here. So let, let me t let, let me ask you what what are your origins? Where where are you from, um, Joanne? I well, I'm born in in Quebec, in Canada. But both of my parents are born in Trinidad. Okay. Um, very mixed. You've got the Haitian, you've got the Spanish, you've got the whites, you've got them all. I mean. Okay. Uh, And um, did your parents, like, were you, did you grow up with the, uh, like, Trinidadian, I don't know if that's the right word, but did you, grow, did you grow up with a Caribbean kind of mindset? Where, how, how did your parents raise you? Did you raise you with the values of Canada? I, I have to say, I don't think. Um, They raised me the way they know how to raise someone. I mean, when it comes to culture, Trinidad culture, yes. You know, I know the music. I know the food. Um, you know, I, I know a lot, but I don't know the history of Trinidad, for instance. So they didn't raise me in that okay. sense. But uh, when it comes to knowing about Trinidad, seeing Trinidad, I still have a lot of family there. They raised me like a Canadian would raise me, I think. Okay. And uh, was was your mom a stay-at-home mother? She was. Uh, she worked with for L'Oreal okay. uh, for many, many, many years. Mm -hmm. And uh, what kind of like spiritually speaking, religiously, you know, what what were the spiritual beliefs that were instilled in you as a child? Um, spiritual beliefs. Yeah. I don't. I didn't have. You know, we did the routine where we went to church every week, every weekend, every Sunday. My father was not Catholic, um, so my father did this. It was my mom and I and, and the kids. Came to a point where I realized, oh my gosh, why are they telling me not to eat fish, for instance, on a Friday? And I stopped going. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Um, it was, you know, it was my choice. My parents always said it was my choice. I was baptized. I had the communion. I had it all. Spiritually, my mom also believe in the spiritual world so she used to go to these churches where there was you know the uh les voyants, mm. the um you know the, the what are they called in well, in, in uh, uh, english well, like the people who see the future basically yeah yeah and it was a church who did a lot a lot of meditation it was a, it was a church of meditation and we'd go there and i assisted a few times i mean I guess that's I guess how it was introduced to me. It was my choice again. It's not like she forced me to. Oh really? To. A church, a, a church oh, of that. meditation. I never, I actually never heard that. Yeah, it, it could be weird, but it's not. Oh, yeah. You know, people were meditating and healing one another, and you know, the whole uh, spiritual wow. way. And and you just you, you got. I mean, you just prayed. sat down. You okay, prayed. they prayed and just sat down. Yeah. Yes, that's all. And then if somebody had a message to come from some spirit, then they, they'd announce the mm. message. If there was a healing, then there was a healing. But nothing, it was just that. Wow. I, nobody's brainwashing you. Mm. Nobody's teaching you anything. It's just everybody's searching for themselves. And You know, I, as kids, we, we, we all have dreams. You know, I had I had a dream of being a wrestler. Uh, you know, I had a dream of entertaining people, basically. And, and you know... When we were children, I also had the dream of being an, an inventor. I had all these sorts of dreams, and you know, you you you, you imagine your your life growing up and all that. What were your dreams? You know, I can look back, and a lot of people ask me that question. And dream, 
I didn't see myself mm-hmm. doing anything. I didn't see myself dreaming to be something mm-hmm. or, you know, a particular job, for instance. Um, I was always attracted to anything that was drawing, anything that was mm-hmm. artistic. Okay. What kind of art? I was strong in math. Uh, I, I loved architecture, you know, that type mm-hmm. of stuff. Uh, but to, for a dream, ugh, no. You know, a lot of people would say, I wanted to be a police officer. Okay. Never. Yeah. I, you know, I could imagine, I could see me going back thinking I wanted mm-hmm. to be that, you know? And, and you say well, you, you were uh, an artist, basically. What type of art did you like? Um, I was, uh, I'm not into that nature stuff. Nature stuff? What do you mean? <laughs> no, I'm not into it. You know, like the, the trees and the house. I like, I liked abstract. Okay. I like um, portraits, a lot of uh, mm. portraits. It, it, it's more of the... What the picture could mm. tell me that 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 I would get out of it, you know, I've got a painting here at home that uh, Mario's um, mother mm. gave me, and it's a painting of um, actually see it's is roosters and and chickens in in an old barn, and when I look at that picture, I see myself okay. in there, you know, it's so real. It gives brings me back to Argentina, for instance, you know. So that's the type of stuff. It has to hit personal, right? So that's wow. the type of art I like. I, I like all types of arts. I, it could be photography. I love photography. Um, paintings, depending on the paintings, the majority of them are that. You know, it all depends. Okay, interesting. So uh, this okay. is Frederick B. You are listening to An Hour in B.A.'s Head, uh, Real People with Real Challenges, Teaching Us Real Lessons. All our broadcasts <laughs> are archived on iTunes and uh, frederickby.com. And uh, the reason we archive them is because repetition is how we learn. Uh, today's subject is the myth of the stay-at-home moms. And uh, we are here with uh, Joanne Narain. How did you meet the father of your child? Well, your um, eventually when I was working as a waitress, I, um, I was also... I don't know if I was, I'm trying to think if I was studying. I don't think I was studying something else because I might have gone to find something to study, whatever in between. I was also working. I had decided to go days. I stopped working nights at the bar because I couldn't do the nights anymore. I was tired. And I went days and I started working at the, what they used to call Aventure Electronic. So it's, it's, it's an electronic <laughs> store in uh, the province of Quebec. Yes, I was. Exactly. I was doing sales in that. That's when I met him. Um, he, I served him as a client. What, what did you see in him that attracted? I, I didn't. It wasn't an attraction right away. Um, I was. Um, how would you say? I that day I remember having this client who wasn't really nice, and uh, he, Mario walks in. Mario was his name, by the way. He walks in and he says, um, and I turned to him. He was so nice, and he had a nice smile. And I said. Keep your smile because it's nice to have somebody mm. smile, you know. It was a comment like that. There was no flirting that he said it was, but there was no flirting involved. So I just pass a nice comment to keep that smile all, all day long, you know. It helps somebody, bring somebody's day, make somebody's day. And that was, finally he started visiting me because I was still working at the bar, but in the day, because I got a day shift there also. So I was working there also in the day, so day and night, uh, the day, sorry. And uh, he used to come and visit me then. And finally, we went for, mm, for lunch. And then, okay. So, so, okay, so, so now you're dating. What age were, your, were you when your children were born? I was 20, 26. So how long, how long, so you, you moved into his house, and then how long after did you get your first child? Maybe a year or maybe so about a year. Been dating for what? Maybe three years by that time. Okay. Yeah, by okay. that time, around three, two, three. Yeah, okay. yeah, about so that. So now, but because you're you're a working person, I mean, you got your your degree in interior design. You're used to working in bars and you know making money and all of that. You did your studies and everything. And obviously, uh, what did what did he do? Did did he have a job? Obviously, he did because he had a home. He had a business. When did the decision? come to to say you know what you're gonna stay at home and take care of the kids i'm gonna go to work there was no official because when i felt pregnant um i was sick it was it wasn't a fun pregnancy and at that time i had changed jobs i was waitering mm. in in a restaurant while you were pregnant um, I, 
while I was pregnant, but I was really sick for both babies. I was very, very sick. Um, you know, headaches and, and, you know, the whole not every symptom you could get when you're pregnant. I got it. And I told Mario, I said, I, I can't stay there. I, I can't I can't work here. And he said, well, just stop working, you know, and I said, well, OK, you know, maybe I go back out and find another job later on. You know, it wasn't it wasn't uh, we, we had discussed it, but it wasn't, you okay. know. It was the decision that we kind of took really quick. I'm like, okay, that's fine, because I was so sick, I couldn't work. All right, once again, this is uh, Frédéric B.A., and you are listening to An Hour in B.A.'s Head. Real people with real challenges teaching us real lessons. And uh, like I said earlier, all our broadcasts are archived on iTunes and FrédéricBay.com. And uh, the reason we archive them is because repetition is how we learn. Today's subject is the myth of the stay-at-home moms. And uh, we are here with Joanne Narain. So, uh, Joanne, walk me through a day. Walk us through a day in the life of a stay-at-home mother with two small children. Well, you're you're running around. You, first of all, it's planned. It's all planned. Okay. <laughs> it's all planned. Okay. It's all planned. Um, I did a lot, a lot. I was unfortunate. Um, I was able to do a lot with the kids. So every day it was something. My the older one was either in preschool. Um, make sure they were in the park, you know, they had their naps in between. Um, if I had to plan, you're going to always La Ronde or, or Granby Zoo. Um, but I, I, I kept it busy. I did so much with the kids. I was actually part of a, a committee called the Moms and Tots in Brassard here. And um, I ran it for a while. So um, that's just activities and moms and tot- toddlers getting together. So I, I ran that for a so while. So basically, basically, you're the manager of the home. Yes, yes. Minus, in my case, minus the finances because I wasn't okay. dealing with that. So because, you know, personally, you know, I, I think I think that stay-at-home moms is one of the hardest work you can do. You have to be patient. And with kids, I mean, you have to have a certain type of temper. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. And, you know, I, I personally respect the hell out of stay-at-home moms. What are some of the misconceptions that people have about stay-at-home moms? Unfortunately, I think sometimes they get a bad rap because it's, it's, sometimes it's seen as, well, she doesn't want to work, she doesn't want to do anything, so she decides to stay at home. You know what I mean? Yes. And, and um, that, if that's the myth, yes, I do hear it. But um, it's so not that. You've got to think of three meals a day, breakfast, lunch, supper, making sure you're home, making sure, you know, I'm not going to have Mario come home and cook neither. Um, I, you got to clean. You got to plan. You're running around doing everything. Yes, it's a myth because I, I guess the difference between that and a job is you're making your own schedule maybe. It could be that of a difference, but if I was home, it drove me nuts. So I had to do, for me, I had to do a lot of things. Okay. It okay. gave me time to, to, to listen, I, I gave everything to my kids. Everything. You know, everything I did was for the kids. We went to Lerone for the kids. Mind you, I love it, but, you know, I did the things for the kids. Play, cut, play time with the kids. It was always mm. for the kids. So, so, you know, you're not there... You're scheduling everything around that, so the, from their sleeping to their, I don't know, from their schooling, you name it. Um, the myth, it's changed. I think people know now that mothers do run around. And I only have two. Uh, imagine others who have three, four kids. That That's crazy. Just crazy. What is, what is some of the toughest times or maybe one tough time that you had, you know, as your children were growing up? I mean, what's the biggest... With the kids or just well, me alone? Let's like both. Let's start with the kids. Kids? I, I remember a, um, a girl, a lady that lives on the street turned around to me and I was telling her how her daughter was sweet because she was babysitting my kids, you know. And she said to me, she goes, you know, as a parent, you get to choose your kids' friends, <laughs> believe it or not. 
you could insist on don't hang around with this or don't hang around with that. And you got to understand friends are very influential. You know, a kid is, you know, if you hang around with a kid who's doing wrong, you're, you're sorry, if your kids are hanging around with kids doing wrong, they're doing wrong. So I've always said to tell your child, okay, no, no, we're not going to go with this kid or we're not going to go with that kid. I wasn't that bad. You know, I wasn't exaggerating, but to tell your kids you know, not to hang with someone. I found that was difficult, you know, for us to say and what, and that's the difficult part. We're just there. I truly believe that as parents, we're just there to lead them, not to show and tell them what to do. You got to lead them to a certain way. You know, my father was do as I say, don't do as I do. And I'm, I'm so against it. You've got to show the kids the you know, the consequences of one thing versus another, um, you know, they may not realize it, but you're, you know, they don't, I don't think they even realize as a young age when I would tell them, no, we, we, you can't go to your friend today because of so-and-so. I wouldn't say because I don't like that friend or that friend's, you know, negative. But as a parent, you've got to lead them to a certain, you got to help them direct themselves just in a straight line. And you have to start from young, not, not when they hit mm. teenager. Because teenagering, when they're teenagers, hormones kick in. It's crazy how hormones kick in. It, it, it's actually scary. <laughs> I can just imagine that. It is. Yeah. Um, okay. And what about you personally? Me personally, I I don't know if every woman goes through this. but um, And I don't know if it's, if it's because I was a stay-at-home mom. I think it had to do a lot with it because I did a lot for the kids and for the house and for everybody else. There was no me. I never really took the me time. Um, you know, even if you, you know, no matter what, money still does have an issue. And I think something to, you hit an age where you go, what did I do? What did I do in my life? Even though you know you've raised the kids, you think you did a you did the best job you could. Don't get me wrong, you did the best job you could, but you forgot all about yourself. I forget about me, and it hits that age where you're going, wait a minute, you know, you're 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 waving your arm and your 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 have what is it called? Is swing? I call it my Oprah wings are swinging. You know, <laughs> your body's changing hormonally and everything else, and you run. Wait a minute, what just happened? Flashback it went so fast and you don't have time to think about yourself. You really don't. And I think that that, that was a little bit of thing I had to struggle with when it came to um, trying to figure out who, I'm, who I am again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know if every woman goes through that. I, it seemed to have a few people, friends of mine who's going through that right now and they had kids and some don't have kids and some kids are still young. But that was my thing. You know, realizing that, oh, my gosh, I did nothing. I have nothing. Oh, my gosh, what's going on now? You and, know, and how do you get out of that? Oh, my gosh. Um, for, for, for all I for- seek help. I seek personal help. I went to a psychiatrist. I, I spoke to one. Um, I went through a difficult time with my boyfriend because of that, because of me, obviously. Um, we went through counseling together. That helped a lot. Um, but, uh, I have to say it's a lot to do with you and searching, you know, we all grow up and we all seek for more, huh? It's not just a materialistic world anymore. It's a lot more than that. Now my kids are grown up. My son's getting his car. My daughter already has her car. They're not home anymore. So it's all now it's time for me now. Oh my gosh. What what do I have to do? What can I do? You know? So that's the struggle. Um, I think I will be struggling with that for the for the longest while, I don't think I'll ever get over it because I'm sure I'm going to put myself a note, another something else to have to defy. Something else is going to come up. I get it. So that's the way I see it. I say I think that's just this tra- uh, a trail of life. That's what life is all about, yeah. right? Growing yeah. and learning and. Wow! Wow! Thank you for 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 your insight. Wow. And and how did I mean? How did spirituality play a role in your family? I mean, as they were growing up. I mean. Um, were you at all spiritual by by like by the time they were teenagers? I mean, were you at all like, did you did you go to church? Uh, did you? No, no church. I still don't go to church much. I'll go on occasion. Sometimes I seek for it, but I'm. 
I probably read more. Mm, what kind of books? What, what yeah. kind of what do you read? Well, I like to read your books, lifelong mm. books. You know, uh, and it's always really a personal growth. It's not necessarily the money behind it. It's a lot to do with personal growth, and that's the type of books I like to read. Right now, I'm reading the Book of Life by um, um, Peter Buffett. No? <laughs> oh, so yes. life is what you make Buff- it. Yes, awesome, I'm reading really? that right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but it's it's it. You know, that's what you search for. That that's. I think everybody get to a certain stage where okay, I don't need to have the big car. Yes, I do feel I still need the big car. But what I mean is not the priority in my list. You can't help anybody. You can't help your kids if you're not good or you're not feeling good of yourself. Absolutely. You know, you can't give advice if you're not. Absolutely. And that's the way I feel. So, you know, growing more and learning more, reading these books, I'm like, oh, my gosh, I got to tell my kids now. If I had known that before, I think I would have grown quicker, you know, spiritually anyways. I am very spiritual. I believe in the spiritual world. I believe, uh, you know, in ghosts, whatever you want to call it. I do believe in that afterlife. I really do. Religion did not introduce that to me. I think I've always had that in me. So I don't need church to tell me or show me or say to me, but uh, uh, spirituality is wow, in my life. Awesome. All right. So once again, this is Frédéric Bay, uh, Frédéric B.A., and you are listening to N Hour and B.A.'s Head, Real People with Real Challenges, Teaching Us Real Lessons. Today's subject, the myth of the stay-at-home moms, and we are here with Joanne Narain. All right, Joanne, we got about two minutes left. Uh, we have many people listening to the show. We have people from uh, actually every five continents. I'm very happy about that. And uh, okay, as you look back, if you could give one advice to all this to all the stay-at-home moms listening right now, what would it be? Advice: Don't forget yourself. Awesome. Don't lose yourself because you're. I'm. My struggle, like I mentioned, is. I'm searching for myself. Still up to this day, I'm okay now, but it was a tough time to get out. Don't lose yourself. Keep focused for you. Take your time. Take your time with your husband also. Um, That was one thing Mario and I had, especially when they were kids. We had date night every week. Every week we had a date night. Went out to supper and then went to a movie. Even if it's a movie, you don't talk. Just remember that you are somebody too. And if you're not well in the head, if you're not well at the heart, there's no way you'll be able to give back to your children or to anybody to that matter. Yeah. Well, that's what I, I, I leave that, leave oh, you with absolutely. that. Absolutely. This is perfect. We're going to end this on this, on this note. Hey, Joanne, that was an awesome interview. Thank you very much. Oh, you're, thank you're, you. you're awesome. I think I you're an awesome you. person. I think you're a genuine person. Thank you. And uh, I think you have so much to give, to be honest. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. You're one, you're probably one of the few I think um, that I, I I accept that oh, from. Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> yes, because I know oh. you mean it, and you know it's hard for me to take compliments. And I'm like, hey, I'm awesome. taking that one. Awesome. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Very hey, much. by the way, just tell us uh, what are your plans for the future now that children are children are grown. Do you want to share it or? Yes, yes. Well, I'm actually um, still working, getting my license for, um, I'm studying for my license. I should get my license for mm-hmm. in the finance. Mm-hmm. I'm a broker now with World Financial Group and I'm getting my license. I should be done by the end of uh, September, mid-September, August, September. So get my license there and hopefully I'll just build, um, building a company, a business. And I think um, that has that's a big step mm. in my book. You know, no matter what age you are, you can learn more and slowly build that. That's my awesome, plan. Awesome. Hey, you know what? Come back on the show whenever you want. I'll be glad to promote your I... your business. <laughs> okay. Well, thank all you right, so thank much. All right. Thank you, Joanne. That's all for today. Thank you for listening. And I hope you found it helpful. If you want to listen to more episodes, you can visit frederickbaye.com slash podcast. If you'd like to connect, you can also tweet me at by Fred, or you can find me on Facebook at Frederick by Writer. And remember, live with purpose, passion, and love. 
See you next week.